بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عيد مبارك to everyone May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate your status in Jannah and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all in piety and righteousness Allahumma ameen uh, Today insha'Allah ta'ala we have seerah the noble life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is probably the seventh or the eighth class and we did not start um, we're just talking about uh, you can say that the uh, pre-prophethood or the incidents that took place before the first revelation um, there are two more incidents pre-prophethood there are two more incidents pre-prophethood and then insha'Allah ta'ala will begin with the start of prophethood in the last class we talked about the participation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Hilf al-Fudul, the treaty of al-Fudul and the role that he played sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that treaty and the importance of that and the lessons that we derived and, benef- and uh, we learned from that. We also talked about the participation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al-Fujjar war. Al-Fujjar is the wicked war that took place between Quraysh and the tribe of Hawazin and it was called Al-Fujjar from Fujur from wickedness because they violated the sanctity of of the Kaaba. Today insha'Allah ta'ala we have a very very important incident that took place um, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was at the age of 25 and this is 15 years before receiving the first revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is that the Prophet's marriage or the Prophet's nikah to Khadija radiyallahu anha Khadija the daughter of Khwailid and the first wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we need to know how did this come about how did Khadija find out about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what made her interested in the Prophet, peace be upon him. Um, let's, uh, you know, as we all know, we talked about, or we, met, we said before that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be a shepherd, right? We used to be a shepherd, ra'i ghanam. And um, so the way you do it, you don't just work for one person, right? But every single day, you have to find someone who owned the flock and then you take care of his flock and then in return of some wages. So this is not, you can say, not um, uh, just one person and you deal with him all the time. No, the Prophet wasallam would find the people, would find the people who owned the flock and then graze them or take care of them in the return of some wages. So it so happened that the sister of Khadija radiallahu anha, again, the sister of Khadija radiallahu anha had a flock. And then subhanallah, she hired the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, along with other young men to graze them and to take care of them. Who, who's that again? The sister of Khadija Bintu Khuwailid radiyallahu anha. This is very important to know. So the Prophet would every single day go just find the people who own the flock and would ask them, if you want me to take care of your sheep, to take them outside of Mecca, graze them and bring them back in the evening and then you pay me something. So it so happened that the, the, the sister of Khadija radiyallahu anha had a flock and then she hired the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam along with another person to graze her, it was, she had a herd of camels and she asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to graze them, to take care of them and then when you graze them right, in the evening 
you need to go back into the town and collect your wages. So, so you, they don't just pay, me, pay you in the, in the morning or before you leave, no. Uh, when you finish work, then you need to go back to the town and then ask for your wages. So the young man with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, hey, we finished, so let's go and ask for your wages. The Prophet, peace be upon him, told him that, why don't you go and ask on my behalf? For I'm too shy to go and ask. For I'm too shy to go and ask from them. So the young man went and then he entered the, the city and then he went the, the house of uh, Khadija's sister and it so happened that Khadija radiallahu anha was there that day. She was there. She was at her sister's house. So she asked Khadija, she, she said, where is Muhammad? Uh, the young man said, Muhammad وسلم, is too shy to come and ask from you. Then Khadija's sister said, I have not seen any man. I haven't seen any man who's more shy, more honorable, more chaste in his interaction than Muhammad. So this was, what, this was the first time that Khadija radiallahu anha heard such a thing about the Prophet, peace be upon him. And from who? From her own sisters, because she deals with him. Khadija was a businesswoman. As a matter of fact, Khadija, you can say, used to be the richest lady in the entire town or in the entire city of Mecca. And also Khadija radiallahu anha was known, or the people of Quraysh would call her the pure and the chaste. Meaning at tahira the pure is at tahira and the chest is Al-Afifah. That was actually, subhanallah, the nickname of Khadija radiallahu anha during the Jahiliya time. Just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was known to be the truthful and the trustworthy man, Khadija radiallahu anha also was known to be the pure and the chest. Khadija had been married twice before the Prophet, peace be upon him, and both husbands have died. They died, so Khadija was a widow. And she had a son, she had a child from the first marriage. And that son embraced Islam and he lived with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but she did not have any children from the second marriage, again. So Khadija had been married twice before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and both her husbands having died. And then she had a child from the first nikah, from the first marriage, but she did not have any from the second one. And also, she didn't have any children from the second husband. And when he died, actually he did not have any kids, did not have any siblings. And at that time, during the Jahiliya time, a woman did not inherit anything whatsoever, as we all know, subhanAllah. So uh, a, a woman did not have any share whatsoever in the inheritance of their uh, husbands or their fathers at all. So how Khadija radiallahu anha got this, when her husband passed away, so he didn't have any kids, he didn't have any siblings, so this is, was a very, very rare opportunity that Khadija radiallahu anha inherited a small portion of money from him. And she then invested it, she invested it, and then, masha'Allah, she became the richest and the wealthiest woman in the entire city of Mecca. And you can say most of the chieftains of Quraysh, most of the chieftains of Quraysh proposed to her, but she refused all of them. She refused all of them because because of her uh, wonderful character and noble lineage and uh, her reputation and her money and her status. And so you can say most of the chieftains of Christ actually asked for her hand, but she refused all of them. And at that time, since Khadija was a, 
she's a woman and most of the uh, business and the trade used to take place outside Mecca to Asham, the, the land of Asham, to Syria, to Al-Basra in Iraq. It wasn't that easy for her to travel. So what she would do, she would have people work for her. But at that time, you would not hire a person by a wage. You would not hire a person by a wage. Actually, you would make it percentage profit. Again, very important. You wouldn't have a person by a wage, but you would make it what? Percentage profit. Meaning, for example, you run my business, this and that, and then you get 30% of the profit, I get 70% of the profit. This is how. And this is Islamically permissible. Okay, from the Islamic point of view, this is 100% permissible. So now Khadija radiallahu anha heard about the, the truthfulness and the trustworthiness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And again, he was known by this, right, to everyone. So Khadija decided to hire Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he would be, uh, that he would do business for her and she would actually pay him more than anyone else just simply because of his what because of his honesty and because of his um, a trustworthiness and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam benefited greatly from that so other than the commission he earned also the prophet benefited from the journey why? Because since he was headed northwards, so he sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed by the city of Al Madina, the city to which he would migrate later on. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed by many lands through which or throughout which Islam was soon to spread. So subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gained a lot of knowledge from the journey. This was very important for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he traveled, Khadija had a servant whose name was Sara, And he witnessed the wonderful character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The, 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 the trustworthiness, his care, his concern, his amana. And on top of that, Subhanallah, Khadija radiallahu anha, um, you can say, uh, had a great deal of increase in her business, more than ever before. So they went back to the city of Mecca. Maysara, Khadija's servant, did talk to Khadija about his experience with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he handled things, this and that. And subhanallah, Khadija had a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with uh, her close friend whose name Nafisa. And she talked about the, her, the, the positive feelings that she had for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is something very important, subhanAllah, in Islam. This is, it's, it's a permissible to have a feeling for somebody. But what makes it halal and haram, how you act upon this, right? Very important. It's okay. Sometimes you see a person and because of their characteristics, because of uh, their personalities and this, and they have certain qualities, those you start to have a feeling for them. And Islam does not forbid this or does not stop this or doesn't say this is haram. But Islam said the way you handle it, how you move on after that. And this is what Khadija radiallahu anha did. She had a heart to heart, to heart discussion with her close friend. And she subhanallah, her friend went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she asked him, why don't you get married? He said, who will marry me? He was an orphan. I was, she said, what if Khadija radiallahu anha wanted to marry you? What if Khadija radiallahu anha wanted to marry you? He didn't say anything, he kept quiet. And then he consulted with his uncle, with his uncles, Abu Talib and others. And subhanallah, 
the Oset. Go ahead, Khadija is well known. She's the pure, the chaste, and this and that. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took his uncle Abu Talib, and he married him to Khadija, radiyallahu anha. Khadija was the first wife, and you know the Prophet peace be upon him loved her a great deal. And all the children of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Khadija, with the exception of Ibrahim. All of them, six from Khadija. Abu Qasim is the oldest. And then Ibrahim is the youngest, but Ibrahim is not from Khadija, Ibrahim is from Maria. But Al Qasim was the oldest of the Prophet's children, Ibrahim was the youngest. So the Prophet وسلم, from Khadija had two sons and four daughters. Four girls, the sons Abu Qasim, and this is the nickname of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then the second son is Abdullah, and Abdullah also was known by the names at Tahir and at Tayyib. People think that at Tahir and the Tayyib are two um, uh, different sons of the Prophet. No, these two names at Tahir and at Tayyib are the nicknames of the second son of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abdullah. So you have Al Qasim and Abdullah, who's known also by the names of Tahir and Tayyib. And then you have the four daughters, we all know them. Uh, you have Ruqayya, you have Zainab, Umm Kuthum, and Fatima, radiallahu anha. Um, Fatima is the wife of Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an. Um, Ruqayya was the wife of Uthman. And when Ruqayya died, he married the second daughter of the Prophet, Umm Kulthum. And that's why Uthman was called Dhunurain, the one with two lights, because he married two daughters um, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And all of them actually died during the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, with the exception of Fatima. She died like maybe six months after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, his two sons died at a very young age. Like for example, um, around the age that Al-Qasim was able to uh, uh, mount a riding animal, he died. So Al-Qasim lived for some years, but maybe uh, I would say maybe uh, eight, nine years old. And Abdullah died at a very young age. And Ibrahim died when he was less than two years, 18 months. And then the four daughters of the Prophet وسلم, three of them lived and migrated to Medina with the Prophet and they all embraced Islam, but they died during his lifetime. And Ruqayya radiallahu anha is the one who died after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is something very important that we know. What was the, the age of Khadija radiallahu anha? The, 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 the most common opinion among the scholars, she was 40 years old. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, was 25. He was 25 and she was 40. Some actually um, said she was younger than 40, even according to a narration from Ibn Ishaq. Um, the, you can the, the authority of the seer, he said Khadija radiallahu anha was 28 years old. Another narration said she was between the 28 and 35, but Allah knows best the most correct opinion and the most common opinion among the scholars, she was 40. The scholars said they, they did not يعني, take 40 as they said because she had um, six kids or more, and someone in, in 40s. It's not that easy for him to have six kids uh, after the age of 40. Even if you have, subhanAllah, a year between each one, then you're talking about Khadija radiallahu anha, um, bore children for the Prophet maybe until the age of 46 or 47. If she had a child every single year, because she had six from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But again, Allah knows best, but it, 
it uh, seems like the most correct opinion. She was 40 years old, and this is very important for a number of reasons. So let's just first, now we talked about how Khadija radiallahu anha found out about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then the children of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So let's just take some lessons from that. Number one, Trustworthiness and truthfulness are the two most important qualities of a successful businessman. Again, as-sidq wal-amana. Truthfulness as-sidq, trustworthiness al-amana are the two most important qualities of any successful businessman. And actually, they were the very qualities that prompted Khadija radiallahu anha to hire the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and do business for her. This is very important. Trustworthiness and truthfulness. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith, if a Muslim businessman is both truthful and trustworthy, if a Muslim businessman is both truthful, sadiq, and Amin and trustworthy, that person will be resurrected on judgment day with the prophets, the truthful, and the martyrs, the shuhada. That person, the truthful and the trustworthy person in his business, right, in his um, dealings with people, subhanallah, with this person on judgment day will be in the company of the prophets, the truthful, and the shuhada. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ التُّجَّارَ يُبْعَثُونَ فُجَّارًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Businessmen and women will be resurrected as fujjar, fujjar like evil or wicked, except to those who were truthful, إِلَّا مَنِ اتَّقَى Except to those who were pious, fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then except who are, were honest in their uh, business transactions. So this is very important, subhanallah, for anyone you have to have these two things. Again, um, a tr uh, truthfulness and trustworthiness are the two most important qualities of any successful businessman. And the Prophet wasallam was blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these two noble characteristics. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Decreed for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to marry the ideal wife, Khadija radiyallahu anha. A wife that was both a suitable companion and a trusted counselor and helper. So Khadija radiyallahu anha helped the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during difficult times. And she participated alongside him in spreading the message of Islam. And this is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with Khadija. And you know that, especially someone in the work of da'wah, someone who invites others to the teachings of Islam and to the path of Islam, is in need of a pious and good wife. Very important. Because outside of the home, his days are filled with struggle. And he faces constant opposition from the enemies. The da'iya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, yani has a lot of hadik. As we all know, whoever invites people to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person is prone to um, face many, many difficulties. So his days actually are filled again with struggles. That's why every time whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk, talks about commanding good or Forbidding evil, Allah said then after that, and be patient. Isbir. Sabir, mention it. Because not everybody will embrace you, not everybody will hug you, not everybody will, will accept what you say. People will reject you, people will oppose you. Probably sometimes you gain a lot of enemies. So subhanAllah, you have so much troubles outside. And when you go home, you're in need of a wife who understands the troubles and the difficulties and the struggles that you go through every single day. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with who? With Khadija radiallahu anha. And we all know that subhanallah, you know Aisha radiallahu anha, the Prophet even um, did, uh, and again Khadija was the, the, the first wife of the Prophet. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until Khadija died at the age of 65. So actually Khadija lived with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for uh, 25 years. Yani when Khadija died, the, the Prophet was what? Was 50 years old. He did not have any other wife with Khadija. And he used to talk her a lot, to talk about her a lot in front of Aisha. He used even to honor her, her friends. And when he never slaughters, he used to give meat to the friends of Khadija and the family of Khadija radiallahu anha. And Aisha radiallahu anha was very jealous. And she said, why you keep mentioning Khadija when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you uh, what is better than her? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that she was the first to believe in me when everyone rejected me. She was the first one to give me her money when everyone abandoned me. She was the first one to support me when my community left me. And also on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَرَزَقَنِ اللَّهُ مِنْهَا الْوَلَدِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with children only through Khadija radiallahu anha. Look how many things. سَصَدَّقَتْنِ حِينَ كَذَّبَنِ النَّاسِ she believed in me when everyone rejected me. She embraced me, supported me when everybody abandoned me and neglected me and opposed me. And then on top of that, Allah has blessed me with kids from Khadija. So again, so she was an ideal wife for the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet Sallallahu so number the lesson number one is what? The, 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 the um, uh, truthfulness and trustworthiness are the two most important qualities of any successful businessman. Number two, how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala blessed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a wife who understands that the struggles and the difficulties and the hardships that he, that he will go through every single day, especially someone in the field of da'wah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tasted the bitterness of losing his sons. Just also he tasted the bitterness of losing his parents. This is very important. And we talked about this before. This made him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, very sensitive to the needs of others. Made him very, very sensitive to the needs of others. But also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed or from the wisdom of Allah azza wa jal that none of his sons lived past their childhood. With the death of the Prophet's sons, no one could then be tempted because of them in terms of loving them to an extreme level and claiming a prophethood for them. Actually, there is a hadith uh, in Ibn Majah the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لو كان إبراهيم حيا لكان نبيا Had Ibrahim lived, he would have been a prophet. Since Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has decided that or closed the chapter of prophethood, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala did not, subhanAllah, will for any of the sons of the Prophet to live after him. This is very important. Otherwise, people would go to extreme. They would exaggerate in their love. And we have seen, imagine if someone who's directly, yani from the, the direct lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can see how people subhanallah do with the grandsons of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Loving them is part of our deen, but to love them to such a level that you exaggerate too much, this may lead to many things. That's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, said do not even, uh, do not exaggerate or do not love me in the same manner that the Christians love Isa alayhi salam. I am the servant of Allah and his prophet. So imagine just if Ibrahim or Abdullah or Al-Qasim lived after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want this. But also subhanallah with the death of the children of the Prophet sallallahu This should serve as a comfort for those who are not blessed with sons. 
for those who are blessed with sons but lose them at a very, very young age. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for, for sadness and sensitivity to be a part of the Prophet's existence. And this is subhanAllah made him very sensitive to the needs of others. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was rahmah because the Prophet tasted the bitterness of being an orphan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was actually uh, um, uh, orphaned for multiple times, not only one time, the death of his mother, the death of his father, the death, the death of his uncle, of his, of his grandfather, and then after that, the death of Khadija, and, and then the death of his children. So this has made him very merciful, subhanAllah, and again, sensitive uh, to the needs of to the needs of uh, to the needs of others um, another benefit the story of the, the prophet's marriage to khadija radiyallahu anha should make it clear to every muslim that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not concerned with achieving the maximum level of physical pleasures that men commonly strive for. Again, the Prophet's marriage to Khadija radiallahu anha should make it clear to every Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not concerned with achieving the maximum level of physical pleasures. This is something that very, very important for each and everyone. But at the same time, the Prophet's also marriage to Khadija radiallahu anha refutes the claims of those who claim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, or that they painted him actually with the picture of a man who was obsessed with satisfying his lusts and desires. But in reality, nothing was further from the truth. Up until the age of 25, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived a chaste life and this is the most important lesson in my opinion. Up until the age of 25, the Prophet ﷺ lived a chaste life within a society that was replete with evil and ignorance. A society where one was free to have anything you want. SubhanAllah, this is very important. So if you look at it this way, the Prophet ﷺ married Khadija at the age of what, 25. And she lived with the Prophet ﷺ for 25 years. But he received the revelation at the age of 40. So he lived with Khadija for 15 years before receiving the first revelation. So the first 15 years of the Prophet's marriage, there was no sharia. There was no set of laws to forbid him from engaging in extramarital relationships. 15 years, right, from the age of 25 to the age of 40, no sharia, no laws, no Quran, nothing. The, that was the norm. The norm is actually to have as many wives as you want. It was not limited. The Islam came to limit it. Islam put a limit to that. For those who say Islam is the first religion who came with the... Um, uh, multiple wives, this is not true. Actually, Islam came to limit that. He put a limit before the coming of Islam. A man can have as many as he wants. And he can divorce and marry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear in the Quran. So 15 years of the Prophet's marriage, just to think about it. No Sharia, no laws, no Quran, no halal, no haram. What did stop him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from having another wife, a second or a third or fourth of it. Someone you're talking about, someone what? In the age of 25, because you know, especially from the age of 20 to the age of 50, 20 to 50, especially that age, man has a strong desire for women. From the age of 20 to 50. After that, it's not like before. So actually, from the age of 25 to the age of 50, 25 years, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived with Khadija radiallahu anha. This is very important to mention because we again, we, we all know that the enemies of Islam and even many Muslims, subhanAllah, they question many things about the Prophet and they paint him um, 
uh, with the depiction of a man who's just only want to satisfy his his lusts and desires but again nothing was further from the truth each and every marriage of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam each and every marriage had a wisdom a story a reason behind it and every single story highlights the, the, the wonderful qualities of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we'll talk about with this but just to put this just to make this clear think about the Prophet's marriage to Khadija radiallahu anha Khadija radiallahu anha was you can say almost twice his age almost twice his age 25 to 40 right and then not only that you're, you're living in a, in, a, in, a, in a society that everything was free Everything was free. If you think that you live right now in a free society where you can do whatever you want, the society that the Prophet ﷺ lived in was actually way more than this. Was way more than this. For those who do not know, there was no limits. Actually, sometimes we have some limits. There was no limits. So the Prophet ﷺ did not really live in a, in a pure society that um, restricted him or holded him from doing. No. Everything was lawful. Everything was lawful. What made him decide to live with Khadija radiallahu anha for 25 years? So the, when she died, she died at the age of 65 and the Prophet, peace be upon him, was 50 years old. 50 years old. Subhanallah. So that's why this is very important incident. And then you need to... And then we will come to the Prophet's marriage, the Prophet's marriage to Aisha radiallahu anha and you will hear things that you never heard before. Things that really never heard before. We all know that Aisha was nine years old. Let's talk about this, inshallah, when we come to that lesson. So alhamdulillah, again, when you come to know, again, every single marriage, there is a reason behind it. wisdom. That's why the importance of studying the seerah is very, very important. Once you understand the seerah, you will be able to defend, right? that the honor and the dignity and to defend the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from any uh, or against any any evil attack inshallah so inshallah this is uh, again as I said uh, in the very beginning uh, um, we talked about two more incidents uh, pre-prophethood this is one of them the Prophet's marriage to Khadija and we have one more inshallah in the next class uh, that is the the role that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam played in rebuilding the Kaaba when he was at the age of 35 when he was at the age of 35 and then after that we'll start inshallah the the actual life of the prophet peace be upon him barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khayra wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh